Hi, I'm Alexandra Pricer for Galvanize, and I'm joined by Gina Kelly, the Associate Director of SB Nation's NFL Teams. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so one of the first things Laura Oakman told me you told her was that, oh, you could interview other people, and you're such a rock star. Why don't you think of yourself first? Um, well, I've had a really interesting experience uh, at career wise. And so I think that that's something that can be really, um, I, I think it can be sort of a, a helpful guide for young women looking at looking to break into the industry. Um, and so that's really the, the main thing. And the other reason is, um, I had a lot of support as a young journalist from other people in the industry. And so I wanted to personally help um, young women who are breaking into this industry. Mm -hmm. Before your current role, you were the senior talent manager of SB Nation, and in that role, you were really able to create opportunities for underrepresented voices in sports media. What voices were you trying to amplify? Um, you know, first and foremost, our, especially our contractor sites, skew very white male, um, like much of sports media. And so really, anybody who's not a white male was a voice that I was looking to amplify. Every sports fan is not a, you know, an, a middle-aged white guy in khakis, and so every sports reporter should not be either. Um, and so that was something that I just really, really enjoyed, was being able to connect with people who wanted to find a way into the industry. And SB Nation's team brands are a great way to do that with, you don't really need any experience. Um, and so it, it did create a lot of opportunities there. When did you first notice that these voices were needed in the industry? A long time, like when I, when I got into the industry, about 10 years ago, it was, you know, when I, when I first got credentialed with the Falcons and I went in, I, I think that the first day I was one of three women there and there were maybe three people of color total. And so it was really, really striking right off the bat, just that it, you know, it, it's a primarily white male industry. Mm -hmm. What was one of your first reactions when you heard that Washington was going to be changing their football team's name? I was relieved. I think that it's well, I think it's way overdue. Um, and so I, I think that we've seen a lot of really positive forward progress over the past few months that's come about as a result of the protests in the wake of George Floyd's death. Um, so that's very encouraging. But I really did not expect Washington to ever change their name. And so I'm shocked, um, but I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm, I'm really thrilled that they're finally doing this. Mm -hmm. And you have such a strong Twitter voice, and I definitely struggle with questioning myself sometimes. Is this okay? Should I post this? How did you become so comfortable and confident posting your own opinion on such a large platform like Twitter? I have to say, part of it is, and I'm very fortunate that SB Nation will not censor me. Um, they respect that my political views are my political views. I do try to make it clear to people that my personal account is my personal account. If people just want to follow for football-related stuff, they can just follow the Falcoholic because anything relevant that I report or anything that I write is going to show up on that feed. That, that way people, if they don't agree with me and they don't want to be subjected to that, they certainly don't have to. Um, so I think that those are two things. But other than that, like the things that I speak out about are really important to me personally. And I think that we're just at a time in human history where being silent is not an option. And so that's the other thing that really motivates me is that I think that we need so much change right now. And I want to be a part of that change. And part of that is using my voice and my platform. Another thing I definitely struggle with, especially being a woman in college, is comparing myself and my growth in my industry experience to others. Have you ever caught yourself comparing yourself to others, not only in the industry, but in life? You know, I think that it's just a natural tendency to compare ourselves to others in life in general. And I know that when I was younger, especially, you know, when I was in my 20s, um, I think that that was, a, that was a really natural thing. I got married and had kids much younger than all my peers, which changed my career trajectory. Um, and so it just, uh, yeah, I think that especially in my 20s, I did compare myself a lot to my peers. But now that I'm in my 40s, I really don't. I got into sports media so late. Um, I, I think that I was, let's see, it was 10 years ago. So I was 34 when I, when I first started writing about the Falcons. And so at that point, I just felt like I was so fortunate to be doing it. And I didn't go to, I didn't go to J school. I, my background's in communications and marketing. And so for me, I was learning the industry from the ground up and I was learning on the job. And so to me, that was just really exciting. Um, I was lucky in the Atlanta market. It's, it's a really 
um, congenial group of people. Everybody gets along. You know, there's not really a lot of competitiveness. I think that that's not a very common thing in most markets. But I was fortunate to come up through this market because instead of comparing myself to my peers, I was building relationships with my peers and getting a better understanding of what they do. And because of that, I've been able to branch out to doing radio. I've got a, a weekly local TV segment on during the season. And so the, for me, I think one of the nice things about getting older is that you do stop comparing yourself to others and you do start just focusing on your own personal growth and development. What kind of advice would you have for someone like me kind of dealing with that? Um, just kind of get trying to get out, trying to get those little voices out of your head. Um, you know, I think one of the things that I tell people a lot is figure out what you like the most about sports coverage and then really lean into that and hone your voice there. Um, and the other thing that I've really learned over the past 10 years is that People will read your work initially because they're interested in the content, but they will keep reading your work or keep, you know, watching your work or listening to your work because they like your unique voice. And so really focusing on developing your unique voice, your unique angle on coverage and making your mark on the industry, I think helps quiet those voices and helps take the focus off what other people are doing and put it back on your own personal development. You've moved from Ohio to Atlanta. You had a various number of jobs and the mm -hmm. business is really just full of transition. How have you dealt with all the change? Um, it's been, you know, some of the change has been forced on me. Like when I got laid off uh, from the wedding industry and I started writing about the Falcons. Um, and so like at, at that point, I was lucky my kids were younger. They were in middle school. Uh, so I was just able to freelance and focus on building a career in sports media. Um, and so that, that for me has been fun. For me, all, all of the transitions are, have been good change. And so I think that that's made it a little bit easier. Um, getting laid off and, and starting off at the Falcoholic didn't feel like good change at the time, but obviously I can look back now and see that it definitely was the, the right step for me. <laughs> so I really want to be respectful as your time, as I said before, and so me just kind of starting my journey into the business, what is the one piece of advice that you would want to share with me for my journey? Um, I missed that. You were breaking up there a little bit at the end. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. What is the one piece of advice that you would want me to hold with me? Um, I think just, like I said, be true to yourself and your voice. Figure out what excites you about this industry, what you love the most about it, and really lean into that. Develop your ability to cover sports from that angle. And I think if you do that, first of all, you're going to naturally be better at what you do because you're going to love what you're doing. And secondly, if you're really focusing on what you love and, and building up your skill set around that, um, I think that you're going to just love it. I mean, I, I think that it just makes it, it doesn't feel like a job when you're doing something that you really enjoy and focusing your energy on something that you're really good at and you love. Well, I've really enjoyed talking with you today and I've already been amazed by your do and I'm so glad I was able to kind of get to know a little bit more about your who. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Have a great day.